Hi there, and this is Hoo-Ha Sports Today, your daily sports update and review show covering all that's happening in your world of football and beyond. Well, for most of this week, we've been talking about Newcastle United and how they have just surprised us with their performance in the league standing and their unbeaten run. Well, at the start of the season, just 10 matches ago, their fans didn't really place that much hope in Alan Pardew or the team. Uh, definitely agree. Pardew is a yes man. You, you never see him say something bad about my Ashley. Again, hard to pronounce his name. Um, uh, he's just a puppet used by Ashley and Derek and MBS for boys. I don't see him as a better manager than Chris Hilton. And if you see uh, from his recent interviews, he doesn't really leave the moral of his squad up. But we will see. We will give him a few matches to see how it goes. And only a few weeks ago, some of their fans were asking owner Mike Ashley... Question, where's the Carol money? Where's the Andy Carroll money? That, uh, that's the question all of us are asking. That's the reason. Where where did the 35 million go to? Exactly. Right. Yep. Okay, promise, promise, promise. We have any? <laughs> Perfectly valid question. But looking at how well Newcastle have done, all seems to have been forgotten. Well, it usually happens when your team is winning. Same with how people react to their governments. So we decided to do a little research and find out which of the current top seven in the Premier League are getting more bang for their buck. And thanks to transfermarket.co.uk, we've tabulated the deals that have taken place in this 2011-2012 season. To find out who's in the red, meaning they need trophies or even European qualification, and who's in the black. Teams that can get by with TV money, a top six finish, or even obtaining a Mickey Mouse trophy and still have a smile on your face. So we'll start with who's currently at the top of the Premier League. And that will be Manchester City. They've spent almost £81.5 million, Sergio Aguero costing them nearly half of that and only cashed in £22 million on outgoing players, which leaves them with a deficit of a whopping £59 million plus. Nothing that a few million barrels of oil can't solve. Next, number two in the league, Manchester United. United spent £50.5 million and cashed in with a little over £10 million and now sit on a £40 million deficit. Big boys, big money. So what about Newcastle United? They, stole, they sold Kevin Nolan, Frazier Foster, Wayne Routledge and Senior Jose Enrique for about 13 million and brought in 13 players but only paid for four of them. And their current top scorer, Dembaba, came in on a free transfer. Now that's bang for your buck. Let's move to regular big spenders, Chelsea. Their biggest payout of that £75.5 million was for Juan Mata, costing Roman Abramovich £23.5 million. Well, their biggest collection came by the way of selling Yuri Zhirkov for 13.2 million, leaving the Blues in the red by 52.7 million pounds. Now to Tottenham, they really do know how to balance their books. Spurs spent a large chunk of that seven and a half million pounds on Scotty Parker, denting their pockets by five and a half million. But they were quite savvy to offload a village full of players, 18 of them, but only cashing in on six. The two highest was Peter Crouch and Wilson Palacios. Spending just £7 million plus and sitting fifth, that's pretty darn good. What about Liverpool? Their new owner, the new hype about King Kenny Daglish. All that spending hasn't really bad fruit yet, don't you agree? Or at least proven its worth on the pitch. We all know how Daglish spent and spent and spent some more during the off-season. Now Anfield is settled with £38.5 million deficit and they really do need Champions League football if they are ever going to recoup that money. And finally, the other London club sitting in 7th after their horrendous start to the season, Arsenal. Pushing the panic button towards the deadline day, the transfer market didn't really make a huge dent in their coffers. After all, just look at the amount of money they made, most of it from Cesc Fabregas and Sami Nasri, leaving the Gunners with the modest £13.6 million in the black. Yes, teams can generate enough money to cover those losses from their final league positions. Last season, it was £756,000 for every position, which meant last place West Ham collected that, while champions Manchester United backed £15.1 million. Local TV rights is at £13.8 million, while overseas rights is at £17.9 million per club. And there are other forms of income as well, like your yearly club subscription. In short, last year, Manchester United went home with £60.4 million, Chelsea 57.7 and Arsenal with 56.2. The lowest earner was Blackpool with a decent £39.1 million. So, now you know. Tomorrow, we will look towards the first weekend of an exciting fixtures in November when Newcastle could just go second for just a little while. Till then, from the team, it's bye for now.